Good afternoon, everyone. Scientists just found a crack in one of Greenland's largest glaciers. The Peterman Ice Shelf, you would expect it to crack anyway because it's under duress as it pushes forward. So these enormous icebergs that are floating up across the coast of Newfoundland are blamed on this global warming. Amazing aerial shots. This year, 684 icebergs. When we go back to the record, 953 in what, 1984? There wasn't that much global warming then. Oh wait, Titanic. Oh wait, 1972. Yeah, it was really cold then, no global warming. More icebergs though. That seems to follow the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation on its cooling and warming phase over 60 years. I'm gonna warn you right now, grab your puppies and kittens and head to your safe spaces. Orange circles, oh, we're mimicking a pattern. Also, 1000 AD, warmer than today, but let's go back to 79 AD. Where did I see that before? Summertime sea surface temperatures around Iceland and Greenland, warmer a thousand years ago than today. Oh wait, wintertime as well. Greenland's gaining ice on the sheet. A nice explanation for the iceberg sightings is Robert Scribbler did a great job showing you these Arctic vortices spinning, cracking the sea ice because of massive waves and cyclonic winds, the water currents, and now the air currents have turned opposite. So you just have this bicycle chain pushing all these chunks of ice. There's something else going on. It's not global warming. It's a repeating cycle. Let's delve further into it. And while you're watching the video, please subscribe to Adapt 2030. And if you're looking for the future of agriculture, Ted Marshallton, Omega Gardens, our episode number 22 on many Ice Age conversations, explains the rotary hydroponic system and the farm dominium. You're looking for the future? This is it. Article from the Washington Post, scientists just found a strange, worrying crack in Greenland's largest glacier. The size scale there, one kilometer, but if you just take that out to the sides, it's not even 10 kilometers across. They're saying it's something alarming, but I'm saying that that glacier is continually moving. It's under duress. It's under stress. There's probably something causing the snag underneath it to shift and cause one side to pull more than the other, thereby causing the crack. Scientists say it's been stable since 1901. And it finally, just right now, 2015, started to move or do something strange. Now, since there's ice gain across Greenland, the shelf edge, it's not that tall. These things are 180 feet tall coming across Canada's shores this year. Aerial footage here, drone operator. I linked that amazing video below in the description box. Newfoundland, stunning. I would love to dive on that if I had a dry suit and somebody with a boat willing to take the risk to go out there. I'm wondering what kind of sea life accompanies one of these things. Icebergfinder.com has a full rundown on all the amazing sightings this year. And they are exceptionally large. We saw this about... Two weeks earlier, making the international news as well. At that point, there were 450 of these icebergs. Now they're pushing 700. It's a new tourism boom for the boat operators. Even the Canadian Ice Service classifies it as large. Area here in pink is where the icebergs are located. They're actually drifting a little further south. I anticipate one of these rolling up around New York City or on the shores of New York, making at least local news in the state. So let's look back through 115 years of iceberg history. Titanic, the red, 1912, 395 icebergs. Next highest level, 1972. Wait, there was no global warming then. Although Buffalo froze during those couple years. 1984, global warming wasn't really even a coin phrase yet. The fear wasn't instilled in us. But wait, how's there 953 icebergs? And then 2008, CO2, the culprit comes back. This year is going to be a record breaker for sure. It's going to approach that 900 level. But if we follow the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation 60 or swing in temperatures, you'll notice that those high points line up with this chart when the Atlantic goes cool. What's startling for me is we're seeing this many icebergs when it's just tapering off the peak of the warming. I found a nice report here. Evidence for solar forcing and sea surface temperatures of the northern Icelandic shelf during the late Holocene. 
area on the map here that they were studying. And I'm going to say, safe spacers, go get your kittens, go get your puppies and hold them tight. Because the information shows that we're just repeating a cycle from 2,000 years ago. And there has been warmer periods, 800 and 1,000 years prior to today, far contrary to any of your CO2 religious beliefs. Why not here for you? Era 100 matching with what we have today. Medieval warm period circa 1000. And also the summer sea surface temperatures are circled in blue there. If we're supposed to be so warming, how come those temperatures are so low? The other side of the charts before present, there's a split down the middle with the red lines. They're marking the low points. I saw this before too in planetary geometry, 79 AD matching up with what we're about to repeat in 2024. Just an interesting catch on those two. And for all the CO2 believers, you know, you've been brainwashed your entire life to believe that this is the warmest period ever in our history. It is not, absolutely not. If it's not air, also sea surface temperatures are another factor you need to add in there. We go back to 1000 AD, also 1200 AD, those eras of time were warmer than today. We're at the far left of the chart. I circled it in the blue circle there. And then we see the same thing in the June temperatures. 800 years ago, far warmer than today. There's other forces at work here. And they conveniently leave out of the news feeds, Greenland is gaining ice, mass budget. Their counter argument is, well, it's gaining in the center, but it's losing and calving on the sides. Okay. Let's move on. Peterman Glacier, where is it? If it's such a huge news story, everybody should know these areas in Greenland and also Nunavut Island. This is the channel that's actually pushing all the icebergs down further south. Interesting how all these factors coalesce on top of each other. Baffin Island also was pegged as the start of the last glaciation. They can get it down to this single area, Baffin Island, right in the Nunavut area. Now, Robert Scribbler, about a month ago, did a great job talking about this high-pressure system. It was more like a cyclonic system that hung over the North Pole for about three and a half weeks, generated 15 to 20-foot waves, 100-mile-an-hour winds, and this was able to break up part of the Arctic ice cap. You were told it was global warming. They conveniently left out the hurricane force winds for weeks on end. So at that time, I did a story on this. I even pulled the Null School wind maps off of there, which I'll come back to. Now, normally the wind further south of Greenland and the Canadian area heads northeast. But this year it has shifted. It is coming southwest right along with the water currents that push southwest through that same channel so now you had all this broken ice from the cyclonic spinning high pressure system with the wind and then you might have some breaking off of the peterman glacier up there the wind patterns are very apparent they're going the wrong direction from what has been witnessed over the last 120 years there's something that has shifted in our climate now, Baffin Island here, this is the seed point for the last glaciation. I mean, two mile thick glaciers over Canada glaciation. And Elsmere Island right there in that channel. These ocean currents bringing everything down. And we just get this massive onslaught of icebergs. Digging through the research, Tidewater Glacier Change, West Greenland. Has individual fingerprint signatures for the calving glaciers and how fast they're moving found that quite interesting. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. We're definitely repeating cycles. AMO's going on its traditional 60-year cooling cycle. We've got a lot of activity, unusual winds up around the Arctic. Something is definitely changing. It has to do with cosmic ray influx, with our magnetosphere weakening, as well as our magnetic poles are moving. There's just an enormous amount going on that they're keeping out from the general populace. I hope you do some more research. I've linked everything below. And with all these changes, I promise you, 
In a couple of years, you're going to need to absolutely grow your own food as a necessary part of your daily existence. Just like we go get gas today, you're going to need to grow food. But make sure it's heirloom vegetable seed. It's not GMO with the Terminator seeds. You want to make sure you get heirloom seeds so you can take that, grow several acres on a garden, wait for it to go to seed, and then use those seeds to replant the following year. And regardless, if you visit foodforliberty.com slash adapt2030 to look at this heirloom seed kit, please make sure it's heirloom wherever you buy it. It has to be heirloom seed varieties for you and your family and your survival. It's got to be heirloom. Please make the right choice when you buy these seeds.